All right, guys, welcome back. Um, back out here at HQ working on the car. I did get, um, while I was back on the coast, clutch bolts. I also got what I thought were going to be flywheel bolts, which you would have seen from that video of DCA. I uh, got some flywheel bolts from Adam that were for an SR, which I thought would fit the RB. I also bought some extra sort of high tensile ones for it, and I also bought bolts for my bell housing in a hope that uh, today I would be able to get flywheel on, clutch on, gearbox on, tail shaft in, and then get the motor sat in there, actually tied on its mounts where it's gonna be level. Cause that way, once it's off the back of the flywheel, uh, firewall, I can start going on with the rest of my fuel system and that sort of stuff. So um, that was sort of the plan when I got here. Turns out I got the wrong flywheel bolts. So flywheel bolts are actually, obviously an SR, and the ones I bought were M10, um, evidently, RBs are an M12 by 1.25, so don't have any flywheel bolts. I just spent, me and dad just spent like an hour just searching everywhere around the property where we might have metric bolts. We don't have any. I've only got some that came out of an RD28 that I pulled down, and the dual mass flywheels on them are about that thick, so they're really long shanked bolts, so I can't use them. That's all I've got that'll fit. So that really puts a bit of a damper on everything because can't get the flywheel on which means I can't get the clutch on which means I can't get the gearbox on which means I can't get the tail shaft in which means the motor has to still sit on the firewall which means I can't go on with my fuel system and I can't go on with the front brakes <sighs> so um really really big pain in the ass when stuff like this happens because again you come out here with a really good plan of attack of what you want to get done and then something like this happens and it throws your way off and pretty much lose a day um so real pain but Again, it's just building cars, especially out here, sort of in the middle of nowhere where we don't really have resources to go and buy things a lot of the time. So, um, anyway, it's, uh, it's really hard to get motivated when something like this goes wrong, but it is what it is and there's still other stuff to do. So uh, at the moment, I'm probably gonna go on with trying to build a steering stop on the LCA for these knuckles, um, so. I'd say that's pretty much what I'm going to have to go on with because it's about all I really have to go on with. I've got to finish off this cruiser, which I'll do first. I'll get it done and then I'll probably look at, yeah, doing, fabricating up some lock stops for the LCAs. Uh, after that, I can probably, I can look at doing um, brake booster and master and then maybe front brake lines if they're not going to be in the way of where the engine's sitting against the firewall. But can't go on with the fuel system because the fuel rail will clash with the firewall and I need the engine to sit back so that I can get the flywheel and clutch and box in properly. And I can't do that because I don't have the right bolts. <laughs> so, oh, actually the other thing I can go up with is I have my flange for my dump. So I can go on with trying to make a dump pipe. So those are both very time consuming um, fabrication sort of jobs. So I can still work at those. So that's probably what I'll do. I did finally get the correct flange for my dump, but um, can't really look at making anything for that because as you can see uh, without a gearbox or anything or even without the motor up where it is actually going to sit once the gearbox is in here with the final mounts and all that sort of stuff it's pretty hard or not hard but I reckon just a dumb decision to try and fab up a dump pipe without <laughs> the gearbox and everything in the car where it's going to be so that's going to be a later job as well because I'm not playing that game so anyway uh, pretty much what I'm left to go on with yeah is is making some lock stops for these lower control arms, which is uh, all good as well. Stuff that needs to happen, so. So the plan for this is uh, you can see on the flat part of the knuckle or the uh, uh, roll center correction piece or where the knuckle would be if it wasn't there. Uh, you've got this sort of flat piece here, which is at a nice height um, and it's pretty much dead flat and there's a nice spot, open spot here on the lower control arm where you could easily get a nice weld, weld a bit of angle on there, so. Pretty much the plan is to cut a piece of angle, weld it on here like so. Um, either way, probably that way, I'll see how much room I've got. And then use a 12mm bolt and use the bolt head as a stopper. And that way you can adjust the bolt in and out uh, to make sure you get, you're maximizing your lock. I don't want to put anything solid in place because that way, you know, you can't, <laughs> you can't go any more lock if it's stopping there. So uh, with a bolt, it's adjustable. That way, once I get everything in the car, I can actually see at what point it's going to start binding and make sure I get the most lock out of the car that I can get. So that's pretty much the plan. I've got this uh, 50 mil box section. So I'm just gonna cut a piece off this box section and then trim it up however it needs to be trimmed and drill it and then use that. It's quite thick, which is good because obviously when you're at full lock, bouncing down the track sideways, uh, if that's the only thing stopping, 
your, your steering at that point, there's quite a bit of force on it. So I may actually even look at uh, potentially getting RB Factory make some box, box in kits for your lower control arms, which are quite cheap. So I may even look at getting one of those. Uh, I think they're only like 17 or so dollars. So might even look at that to really strengthen these LCAs up. Um, and yeah, really make this car a pretty wild setup. I'm pretty excited for how this is coming along and how well this is all working out and how much lock it's looking like it's going to have. I think it's going to be really cool. So, so this is somewhat of my idea for a lock stop. Uh, this is a bit of angle that obviously I've cut. It's cut like that. Um, so what I've tried to do is with the this diagonal downright piece, I want to put that in towards the caster rod. Um, that way, all the forces that are directed on this piece from the bolt from this steering. Uh, is going to be transferred hopefully directly down and then straight up the the caster rod whereas if it were the other right like way around if I put this on the other side or put the other one it's pushing down on this part of the arm it's trying to torsion the, the, the lower control arm there and it's trying to sort of pull it around a bit so that's just a bit of justification to why I've made it in the way I have so pretty much plan is this doesn't need to be this wide I'll cut this down trim this down Probably trim it on an angle to give it a bit more footprint. And uh, yeah, pretty much what I plan on doing is putting my, my, my hole sort of in there. Welding that into the lower control arm there and then you can adjust it in and out to where you want it to, uh, to stop your steering. So this is somewhat the idea. As you can see, bolt head is going to be lock stop and uh, is adjustable with longer or shorter bolts. Can be completely adjusted, so. So, there you go, you can see, obviously my weld's still not that great. Uh, we've only got 8mm wire in the MIG, which is quite big for what we're doing, but we put it in the MIG because it's all we had at the time. I need to buy some more 6. But uh, this is how it works, and this is with a bolt in it, which I believe at the moment to be a pretty good size. And that's just going to come around and that's going to stop it there. Um, the other obvious advantage to having adjustable lock stops, which I haven't spoken about yet, is uh, obviously at the moment with no wheel tire set up on the car it's easy just to say we'll be able to adjust it for as much lock as we can but that may not be the case depending on the wheel and tire setup you can have rubbing all sorts of stuff so that's the other advantage of having lock stops is you can you can adjust them to uh, pretty much where you, your wheel will start rubbing on things that are undesirable or anything your car is going to start doing at lock that's undesirable you can adjust it out which makes it very handy, so pretty cool to have. So um, yeah, that's been a cool little mod. So I'm just gonna paint them up, put them back in, and that's gonna be the control arms with lock stops done. I'm not gonna bother boxing them in yet. Uh, I'm just gonna wait, I suppose. It's, it's one of those things where it doesn't quite have to happen. There are a lot of things like that on this car. Uh, the Rio on this car, it's pretty ugly. Uh, the intercooler and, the, and the, the uh, intercooler brackets and all that, they're all pretty ugly, they all need painting. All things that I do intend to do as I go, which would be good because I'll still be do making content about it. But what I'm doing at the moment is just trying to make sure I get the car driving. Uh, I don't want to really waste any time on stuff that doesn't need to be done now. Things that can be done later, I will leave till later. Uh, at the moment, yeah, my focus is just on getting it going, getting it driving, getting to the track. While I wait for, I'm gonna paint those lower control arms, so in between that, I'm going to look at maybe making this uh, S13 strut brace fit and work. So this is a uh, S13 strut brace that I bought off eBay uh, for anyone who missed the episode. Okay. Being a real prick to work with at the moment, especially with one hand. Anyway, the reason I bought this off eBay for anyone that missed it was because it's a lot cheaper than trying to buy uh, one for an R31, which I'm pretty sure there's only one brand that's making them anymore. I'm pretty sure that's uh, White Line have discontinued them for the R31. So these off eBay for an S13 are uh, something around $90, like quite cheap. And uh, by the looks of it, almost pretty well the same design as a White Line or something similar. The reason I bought these is because these arms on them are very long. Um, there's a lot of room between here and there because uh, I've obviously got S13 shells here as well. I measured the difference between Rex's R31 coil towers and an S13 that I've got here is coil towers and the difference is about 40 millimeters. So I picked the one with the longest ones of these because I believe that I will be able to modify it to make it work. So at the moment, I'm sort of just fitting this up. You can see how this is adjusted almost all the way in and it's on the 31 and this is how much wider it is. So what I'm trying to do is sort of get a pretty accurate measurement for just how much wider it is. And uh, 
use that to pretty much find out how much I'm going to have to shorten it and where I'm going to have to drill holes in these. And pretty much what I'm going to do is just drill these, re-drill these where they need to be to fit 31. And then trim off the excess and repaint these and then hopefully it should just bolt in. It should be fine. So here we go. I've decided to measure outside to outside instead of centers just because this is already uh, adjusted all the way in. So there's plenty more adjustment to come out. So I figure if I go outside, outside to outside, it leaves me room to adjust the, uh, the strut brace. So that difference, if you can see that, is uh, 39 millimeters. So I'll call that 40. Again, this is what I figured out pretty much when I uh, measured the, the difference between the 30 and the 31 when I decided to order this strut brace. So for that reason, all I'm gonna do is take these ends off. I'm gonna measure 20 mil back. I'm gonna re-drill these. Uh, looks like I'll probably have to put some longer bolts through because of this ridge. I don't think these are going to work. It's also gonna be a real prick to drill, but you get that. I'm gonna give it a go anyway. Uh, then I'll refit and make sure it fits on. So I've drilled these out. 20 mil back actually came up pretty much right on the tip of that ridge, which uh, was quite a pain to drill. But anyway, they've been drilled out now. So. Very cool. So I actually did end up having to cut them just to test fit because these actually clashed with the adjuster nuts. Um, but as you can see, it fits fine uh, with a nice amount of adjustment on both sides. So that's pretty good. I did notice while cutting them, like uh, actually the welds to the base plate, the these are pretty how you going. So I'll be keeping an eye on these definitely as you know track days go by. Um, I dare say these will probably end up cracking. Um, but time will tell. They are a cheap strut brace. It is what it is. So all I'm going to do from here is just clean up these rough edges with the grinder, round them off so they look nice and factory, and then I'll probably sand these up and paint them. Um, and they will not be blue. <laughs> they are not going to be blue, I'll tell you that much. But there you go, you can make a cheap eBay S13 strut brace work. Uh, the reason I wanted to make a strut brace work is because um, putting the strut brace on this with the last setup made a massive difference to turn in. Uh, it was really good, it made a very noticeable difference. I did the strut brace at the same time as the white line rear sway bar before Matsuri one time, and it was awesome. It made a massive difference, um, and the car handled really well. So I really wanted to get a strut brace on it again. So as long as these welds hold up, I'm sure this is gonna be fine, but it's gonna be a matter of pretty much wait and see. Uh, the only other thing is, yeah, it should have plenty of clearance off that manifold should yeah so while i'm laying some paint down on that stuff over there i'm going to start looking at fuel system obviously i can't put my rail on at the moment i can start mucking around with my reg and start sorting out my lines and stuff so what i'm using is just uh 5 16th fuel line i can find where i bloody put it here it is here just 5 16th fuel line from repco um i'm using these fittings i'm pretty sure they're for braided line but i'm just going to use them for this stuff anyway i actually got a heap of these fittings for free of a mate by the name of Macaulay who actually owns uh, Psycho 20 which is a pretty insane uh, RB20 powered ST141 Corona sedan. So <clears throat> I decided to use uh, all these Dash 6 fittings just because I had heaps of them so all I ordered was like uh, Maka gave me a few different ones right angle a few straights uh, so all I did was order um, a right angle fitting for my pressure sender because I couldn't actually get an adapter for whatever this bung is. It's like an M14 by one. It's a really weird size. Even this bung doesn't quite fit it properly, uh, but I couldn't get an adapter to sit in there anyway. Plus the other thing I actually realized while I was trying to do it, uh, cause I went to NZ and had a chat to them about it and I was looking at it. Uh, that bung is actually before the very last injector on the feed. So I'd rather not have something down there that is protruding far into the rail, considering it's before the last injector. Uh, that's just a little, I suppose, pedantic thing from me. But yeah, I just wasn't too keen on that. So that's what I've done. I swapped out the barbs for the actual Dash 6 and uh, Dash 6 to 18 MBT fittings on the reg. Um, so it's mounted up there nice now. Can't really see the gauge from there. <laughs> Probably gonna have to use a mirror to, to sort of see it. But uh, because I plan on running the Deppies Advance copy thing in there, I do have a right angle with a 18 MPT bung or adapter coming, which I plan to run off the 
into the reg uh, and I'll run my pressure sender for my DEFI's advance so I'll be able to have a fuel pressure gauge inside the car which is going to be great because it means the other thing with the DEFI's advance is you can set alarms so it means I can set alarms for if it drops in fuel pressure so really handy things those little DEFI's advance uh, bits of gear especially when you consider how much it is to buy gauges for everything uh, the one we've used in the Land Cruiser V80 has proven to be quite good so I'm pretty pretty stoked to use that so it's it's good to be able to set alarms for everything especially when you're using a an ECU that's as basic as the Microtech LT8 because the ECU doesn't really have a lot of protection uh, provisions I suppose uh, not not as much as a good ECU so the ECU will not pull timing and that sort of stuff to adapt to things like this happening so it's good to have an alarm so that you can adjust it yourself if something goes wrong so if it drops fuel pressure if it over boosts uh, if it gets too hot I'll have an alarm and that'll be awesome fuel pressure if oil pressure drops I'll have an alarm like all that all that stuff it's, it's just really handy to have so I can't do the whole fuel system because I don't have all the fittings I need yet but uh, pretty much this is what I've got so far. So this is the feed. This is a Z32 fuel filter. Uh, I just use a Z32 because it's what they had in stock at Repco pretty much. And I know they flow pretty well. Um, they flow enough. So Z32 fuel filter, which I just hose clamped to the little thing there. Uh, so that's a feed. So that's going to come from there into the back of the rail, which I have coming a 120 and a 90 degree fitting, depending on which one's going to work better. I used to have a 120. Um, Pretty sure it was just to keep it off the firewall a bit because the rail does come really close to the firewall so i just have to check that when it gets here what it's actually going to be um so then obviously through the rail all the injectors then at this end it has a pretty well a u-turn fitting which actually comes really close to this temp plug which is a real pain sort of sits about there uh but that is what it is so then it does u-turn in that one then i'm going to run it down in the middle of this manifold nice and hidden so it'll run along the rail and then down under the manifold and that'll come down to here which is where i have my right angle fitting coming that has a 1 8 nbt bugging it for my pressure sender for the reg um, then obviously through the reg and then down the return and that is the fuel system in its entirety pretty much so those fittings should be here this week uh, and then I can complete that hopefully by then I've sorted out my flywheel bolts and then that motor will be sitting where it actually needs to sit so that I can actually put the uh, whole fuel system on it. So anyway these are blooming pretty bad because it's quite cold and I don't have a heat lamp set up. Uh, I'm not particularly that worried about them. It's sort of just a quick paint up. I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just... yeah. They look alright. It looks better than blue. Alright so I decided to go down and dig out my intercooler. Uh, very easy to fit considering it's actually literally my old intercooler off this car I actually bought this off Luke when I bought the new front end for Rex when he smashed his front end I bought this with it because Luke wasn't going to use it and I thought I would use it for something And here we go, it turns out I'm using it literally for the same car So that works out pretty well So it literally had uh, the brackets still on the radio, uh, on the intercooler So just bolted straight back in where it used to It's all pretty barbaric, I, never, I didn't make this I actually bought the car originally with this intercooler on it with these brackets uh, they're pretty barbaric, um, but again, it's one of those things, one day down the track I will do, probably. I'll remake these brackets and, and repaint this into cooler and tidy up the front end a lot. But as I was saying just before, it's just one of those things I don't need to do now and it's going to prolong the uh, process of getting this car running and driving. So, got that on, um, dug out my box of just random intercooler stuff, uh, intake piping, stuff like that. So I'm going to see what I can muster up as far as building an intake out of what I've got because uh, that's the aim of the game. A quick look through what I've got as far as intercooler piping goes uh, it should be a fairly simple thing but there are a few things I'm going to have to get that I just don't have and there's a few things down the storage shed which I'm going to need to go and get which I don't want to get at the moment because it's wet and gross down there. Um, so I've got my catch can mounted uh, as you guys can see that's the same one that was in it the old one Luke gave that back to me so that's very cool uh, what else got uh, one of the front brake lights in, got the other one in as well. But uh, at this stage I'm still, I'm unsure, I don't know, I'm going to look at the booster tomorrow and see what I'm going to do about a booster, so I'm just going to wait for that. But anyway, that's pretty much all I'm going to do for now. 
Um, that's probably going to be it for this episode. I'm just going to, yeah, finish painting this stuff up. And then I might come up after I have a shower and just do some less greasy things like change the trims under the windows and that. But um, I don't know, I'll see how I feel after a shower. But it's going to be it for this episode, guys. I am going to continue this tomorrow, do a few more things. Um, yeah, a bit of a shame about those flywheel bolts. Again, same thing <laughs> with most episodes where uh, it's not the progress that I wanted to make this episode, but it still is progress. Um, engine bay, a few things mounted, it's all ticking along. We're getting there, hopefully it's not too much longer at this point. So um, yeah, hopefully this week I can get those intercool uh, those flywheel bolts sorted. And after that, with any luck, it's gonna be, um, yeah, game on. It's gonna be flywheel, clutch, gearbox, tail shaft, and then once this motor's sitting properly, the actual radiator can go in. And then it's just a matter of intake exhaust wiring, and we're pretty much there, so. Yeah, pretty excited, getting excited. Still got a bit of interior stuff to do, so. Still a few things to do. Still got some important stickers to put on the car. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, it's good. So thanks for watching as always, guys. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe. Look out for the next episode, um, which I will film tomorrow. And yeah, put it out for you guys. Thanks, guys. Cheers.